hypercube. Okay, this screen is merely informative. Okay, and uh, there is no analytical procedure to be done in here. Even though that we can see that there are some, there is some information in here. Let's just load the wavelength vector. Is the this one WV good? So this vector or this wavelength range goes from one from 950 something up to 1600 something okay so what is this composite image image meaning so it's very very easy imagine that we have our spectra here okay these are our spectra what we do is basically to split this spectra into three equal divided uh, parts, and we calculate the mean of all this spectra, and this is what we are going to associate with the red channel. We do the same in here, and this is going to be the green channel, and the same in here, and this is going to be the blue channel. So at the end, what we will obtain is for every single pixel a composite image being a false color image of RGB. So if we look at our image plastics, here we see that the background is black. That means that the background is around here in the absorbance zero, probably. Then this plastic looks like a little bit greenish. So it means that it has a strong wavelength or a strong absorbance in the wavelengths that are supposed to be in this area of the of the green okay and the same we can say about this plastic but of course this is not quantitative this is just a mere observation of the data okay if we go inside this composite image and with our right button of the mouse we press this select this pixel will appear this is the red this red ball so then with my mouse i can move it and suddenly the pixel in the position 29 in <clears throat> in the columns 44 in the rows will appear here highlighted you see then we can move this red dot into this one and we see that is this one the one highlighted and we can do the same in here and of course in here or basically we can just check what is going on in the background that is a neutral background okay so this would be the first uh, screen exploration there is no analytical tool in here but now what we have to do is to say accept okay in this screen there are things there are analytical things that we can already do the first one is that well there are some occasions in which we have a mask already <clears throat> already created in our workspace so we can use it in this case we don't have anything and we only have one image so it's just sample add okay and we can visualize the information here in another way for instance, if we want to visualize, for instance, what are the specific pixels or the specific spec or the spectrum of a specific pixels. So if we click on wave and we can say select, now with the mouse, I can go and click in any part of this screen. And we can repeat this operation as many times as we want. So we have the selected pixel or the spectrum of the selected pixel in display. Imagine that we want to create, uh, we, want, we want to start creating a database. So instead what we can do, or we can compare, we want to compare a spectra of the different pixels in here. So what we have to do is to activate this multi-select and select again, I can select one pixel. <clears throat> in this plastic and then select again and one pixel of this plastic select again one pixel of this plastic 
and select again one pixel of this plastic. And even more, what we can do is to check a specific pixels in here, you see, in this list, we can see, we can see highlighted the pixel that we have chosen. Also, this list and this spectra can be saved in our workspace. Pixels, that is, contains this information and the spectra that contains these pixels, this, uh, this spectra in order, in this order, into our workspace. It's here the pixels and here we have the spectra. Okay. If instead of one pixel per plastic, you want to save the average of a region of each plastic, one of the things we could do is to calculate the mean. We can calculate the mean of the whole image. In this case, it doesn't make really sense but we can calculate this, the mean of a specific area. So with our mouse, we can select the area like that. Okay, this is the mean spectrum. And now with the mouse, we can directly move to this area. In this case, if we want to make it smaller with the mouse, we can also decrease the size of this little window. Okay, of course, all these results can be saved. If now I press save, I will save this three spectrum, this three spectra. That is the mean in blue and the standard deviation in red. Okay, so something like this will appear, mean spectrum and standard deviation spectrum. It will go to the workspace. If I now move in here, I can do exactly the same. And of course, every time I save, I can put the name that I desire in each one of them. Okay, so you see, workspace, I will have the mean spectrum of the first cut, the mean spectrum of the second cut. And we can also create our databases like that. If instead of this area, I needed a smaller or larger, I just have to increase with the mouse. If I want to really change the shape of this, uh, of this small window, what I have to do is to click again in a specific area. And now I can play with the mouse as much as I need in order to select the area that is more convenient for our analysis. Okay. Of course, this one doesn't match in here. So what I can do is to just move it a little bit in order to make it more specific for this area, okay? And every time I press saving, I press the current information in here, okay? So this is concerning, here we are, this wave area. So concerning this image area, we can do the opposite. We can uh, just, select one wavelength and see the image that we generate at that specific wavelength. We can also select many of them just for the sake of comparison, like that or like that, or even moving it with the slider. Okay, with a slider here, okay? So as you can see, it's very versatile. Of course, this information can be saved, okay? And here is the first screen in Arrange the Images in which we can actually obtain some quantitative or some information that can be used afterwards, okay?